Homeopathy is an alternative medical treatment that is based on the idea that if a substance produces symptoms that are similar to those of a disease, then that substance may be used to cure the disease. These remedies are usually plant or chemical extracts heavily diluted in water, sugar, or alcohol. Samuel Hahnemann, the father of homeopathy, devised the technique after he attempted to test a treatment proposed by the physician and chemist William Cullen. Cullen suggested that cinchona bark could be used for treating malaria, and so Hahnemann ate some of the bark, discovering that he felt symptoms like those experienced by patients afflicted with malaria. Instead of testing for success of alleviating the illnesses, Hahnemann merely engaged in experiments to find out what substances produced symptoms like those of known diseases. He published his findings in a list of several remedies in 1805. Today, homeopathy has grown into a multi-million dollar industry, with over 20 homeopathic schools in the United States alone, and many products being sold in pharmacies, health food stores, practitioner offices, mail order catalogs, and online stores. The FDA does not require approval of these products before they hit the shelves, and although they must be safe according to the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act of 1994, no expiration dates or tests of efficacy are enforced. Homeopathic remedies are diluted by 1 to 10 or 1 to 100, and are shaken vigorously until the original substance no longer remains, as homeopaths believe that the more diluted a substance is, the stronger and deeper acting it will be. This means that from a purely scientific standpoint, homeopathic medicines are indeed placebos. But practitioners don't stop there. Samuel Hahnemann himself believed that such dilutions helped to unleash the dynamic spiritual healing force of the substance. In his 1810 book, The Organon of the Healing Art, Hahnemann compared the process to magnetism. Only after a bar of steel is dynamized, rubbing it with a dull file in one direction, will it become a true, active, powerful magnet, one able to attract iron and steel to itself, and impart to another bar of steel by mere contact, and even some distance away, magnetic power, and this in a higher degree the more it has been rubbed. In the same way, will triturating a medicinal substance and shaking of its solution develop the medicinal powers hidden within, and manifest them more and more, or, if one may say so, spiritualizes the material substance itself. Hahnemann's underlying concepts to homeopathy are very unscientific. No one has observed or measured any sort of spiritual healing force in substances. Homeopathy also predates the important work done on diseases by Pasteur, Lister, and others, and many of the afflictions of Hahnemann's day, such as cholera, tuberculosis, and typhoid, are now curable by modern medicine. Many studies have been conducted on the effectiveness of homeopathy in treating different ailments, and from 2003 to 2007, few, if any, of them provided evidence that the remedies were any more effective than the placebos. So far, no homeopathic remedy has been shown to be dangerous, but there is certainly danger in postponing medical treatment for serious illnesses. It has been found that some homeopaths do advise their patients against immunization and clinically effective drugs, and sadly, some of them have died as a result. In all fairness, homeopathy may be useful in relieving oneself of minor pains and afflictions, like headaches, stomach aches, etc. But anyone who promises more has a lot of accounting to do in support of their claim. As with many other alternative medical treatments, believers desperately cling to a 19th century practice that has had serious doubt cast upon it. Perhaps they do so because of the spiritual or superstitious origins of the method, or out of a bitter hatred and fear of modern medicine. Either way, many of these types seem to make their favorite practices into a religion of their own, while simultaneously attempting to label it science. Why are there no modern proponents of bloodletting, though, trying to argue that it is still a scientific practice? I have my uncertainties about the medical profession, rest assured, but I see far more of questionable nature in alternative medicine. The ideas are born out of supernatural concepts, and over a hundred years later, the practitioners try to bolster their work with modern science. As a skeptic, I find it eerily similar to the intelligent design movement in that regard. Now I am also of the opinion that free people should have the freedom to put whatever they want into their bodies, including homeopathic remedies. If that's what you prefer and enjoy, you have that right. Yet not everything we prefer is good for us, and some practitioners of homeopathy make very bold claims that we should all be skeptical of, because the evidence seems to overwhelmingly show that homeopathy is no science.